Welcome to the Dear Applicants podcast, where we dive into practical tips, insightful interviews, and explore personal stories that will hopefully inspire and motivate you to pursue your dreams and achieve your university admission goals. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dear Applicants. I'm your host, Jonathan, and joining me today is a former student of ours, Wendy. Uh, Wendy, I'll allow you to introduce yourself. Hi, so um, yeah, I'm Wendy. I went to SAS before college, and yeah. And where are you going to go, be going? Oh, and I'm going to NYU Stern. So she's going to be going to NYU Stern in the fall for a very interesting course, which mm -hmm. we will get into later. Fairly atypical, no? Yeah. And also, do you think it's related to what it is you want to do? I think so, yeah. Okay, definitely. so it's sort of definitely setting you up for something moving forward. But let's start off with your time at SAS. How long were you there, Wendy? Um, I was there for three years, so from my sophomore year to my senior year. Okay, where were you before that? Stanford American. And why the switch? Um, well, honestly, a lot of my friends were moving okay. to SAS. So. so it's just a great migration from yeah. SAIS to SAS. Yeah. Got it. And and how was uh, how did you find your time there? Were you there for three years? It's quite um, a while. Right? I really enjoyed it. I think it was definitely very different okay. from my old school. And there were some changes while I was there too, but I liked it, yeah. What would the what you say was different? What were the biggest changes for you? Um, it's a very big school. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely the biggest school I've been in my whole life. So it was a bit jarring. Like by the time we graduated, there were still so many people in my grade that I just I didn't even know. Okay. So, so yeah. was that the biggest difference for yeah. you? And what were the changes that you were talking about? Um, I think just academically, everyone was a lot more academically driven. Ah, okay. And yeah. And do you think there was a, that, you know, the people who are academically driven, were they a self-selecting group? Do you think that's just because of the kinds of people that you went to school with? Or did the, did the school and did your teachers actively facilitate that sort of learning environment? Um, I think just in general, everyone there, like, if you're going to SAS, normally people are more academic. I think it's just like the environment. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it was bad. It was, oh, no, no. no yeah, yeah I, I think it was quite motivating. Got yeah. it. And we've heard from a lot of students that go to SAS that your 11th and 12th grade, they really ramp things up. Right? <laughs> it can get quite hectic. Yeah. Was it a big switch moving from your sophomore year into your junior year? So from 10th grade to 11th grade? Um, I think so, yeah, because AP started yeah, AP's in coming. junior year. So it, it, took some quite, it took some getting used to, mm -hmm. but yeah. And tell us a little bit about the AP. So how does the curriculum work for all of our listeners and, and sort of students and parents that, that may not understand the AP system? Um, well, it's like you take an AP class mm -hmm. and we have a seven credit, seven AP credit maximum. And there are like AT classes, which are also advanced classes, but they're more like project based. And so basically the whole year they teach you from a textbook to prepare you for the AP exam, mm -hmm. which happens early to mid-May. Okay. Yeah. And is it a one year? Yeah, it's a course one year. Course. Okay, so it's not like you're doing it 11 then. Yeah, no, it's not like IB or the IB. I think it's okay. Two years. Or the A levels for that matter. Yeah. And how, so what APs did you take? Um, I did economics, statistics, um, and economics, sorry. Oh, and environmental science in my junior year. And then I did calculus BC. <laughs> physics and Lang. And then you took a bunch of ATs as well, right? Psychology, yeah. I think, was something yeah. that I remember you yeah, taking. Yeah, I also did CS. So there's quite a few. Oh, oh, so AT computer science? AP. Oh, AP computer, computer science as well. So about seven yeah. APs and then a couple yeah. of ATs. Yeah, I wrote well. eight so you, exams in total. Okay, so you maxed economics out. Is, yeah, micro, macro. Oh, okay. And how, if, how did you manage to sort of deal with all that workload? Because I know you were pretty active outside of the classroom as well. Yeah. Well, I think that. You just kind of learn, like, by, after the first quarter of junior year, you really just learn to manage your time and you know what works for you. Mm -hmm. So, like, me, I definitely, on, like, during the weekdays, I let my work pile up a bit. And then I, like, did it all so, on the so weekends. So do we all. Yeah. yeah. And so I, like, did it all on the weekends. So I'd hang out with my friends maybe on, like, a Saturday, and then i do all my work on a Sunday. Or, like, i do all my work on a Saturday and then go out on a Sunday. Okay. So, yeah. And I mean, so there are obviously tons of of juniors of yours that are yeah. following in your footsteps, you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of students of the rest of Singapore who are also dealing with pretty heavy academic workloads while especially the ones that want to go overseas are also trying to build up their profile and, yeah. and do a bunch of things like you did, which we will get to. Mm -hmm. Are there any tips that you have for them? Any words of wisdom from someone who's navigated that and is going to, the, to NYU? 
Um, well, I think definitely just know what works for you. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like this might be really bad, but everyone tells you to not procrastinate. But I think to an extent, like I'm not an all-nighters person. And neither am I. Yeah. Either. And if I didn't like leave some of my work just undone, I would have barely gotten any sleep like during this like school week. And I think that would have been worse for me th than like just catching up and just making sure that you can catch up to what you procrastinate is important. So procrastinating is okay as long <laughs> as you have that buffer time. Yeah, that you can I use think so. Like give up. yourself a buffer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, not something you hear <laughs> typically, but I think it's something I agree with. I think yeah. it's a philosophy that I've inadvertently followed myself. I think that most of us would agree with it. And Jeremy's nodding over there in the corner as well. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the AT classes. They sound quite interesting, especially because of the the project-based nature of mm -hmm. them. So yeah. what did those classes look like and well, um, how are they different from the APs? So in my junior year, I did environmental science. Mm -hmm. That was an AT class, but we wrote an AP exam. And it's a, I'd say my AT classes had a lot of reading like psychology I also did my senior year they have a lot of reading but there's a lot more like projects and like group work and like so what do those projects look like um well there were papers like I did AT econ and and AT psychology and there were a lot more papers it felt more like there were like written exams not for AT econ but for environmental science and psychology but they were like half the grade Whereas in your AP classes, like MCQs, FRQs, that's your basically your whole grade. Got it. And when so. you say, so when you say papers, these are sort of like research papers yeah. that you have to do. Yeah. Were there any interesting ones? Um, I'd say there were quite a couple, mm -hmm. and I think, like, towards the end of the year, the projects get more interesting because you get to dive deeper. You've learned more, so naturally, yeah. Okay, got it. And and I notice, well, from you listing off your classes and also from, from what I, I, I know what you what it is you're going to study, you're quite STEM inclined. Right? Yes. Definitely leaning towards the sciences and math. Yeah. Has it always been that way? Or is this something that you figured out through trial and error? Um, I think it's something I realized in my junior year when I moved to SAS, actually. Oh, so it was only pretty recently. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because I realized that I was... I'm not a very creative person. So like oh, I've seen your essays, I'm sure that's so not like true. if like they told me on the spot to write something, I struggle. Okay. And it's like so I do think that STEM in a way it's like you just know how to do things. Mm -hmm. And so I enjoy that more, yeah. So is it know how when you say you know how to do things, does this stuff just come naturally to you? Or it's <clears throat> the ability to to learn something and then be able to reapply that in different scenarios. I don't think it's natural to me. Like I think it's easier for me mm, than like than English. Creative. Yeah. But and I'm also not like artsy or like musically inclined. So I'd say it's just easier than more like um than more like liberal art stuff. Hmm. Okay. But it's Got not it. easy because STEM is quite challenging in itself. Before we continue, I would like to take a quick break to remind you to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review on your favorite platform. Your feedback helps us improve and to reach a wider audience to provide further insight into this arduous journey. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, feel free to email us at our email linked in the description below. We'd love to hear from you. And and so I know you applied to both the U.S. and the U.K. and, and just sort of interested in uh, the rationale of applying to the U.S., which is where you, you're eventually going to be going. Um, typically, what we see students who are a little bit more you know, academically inclined in one particular direction, for example, they just want to do economics and mm -hmm. nothing else. Yeah. They would tend to choose the U.K. because the education system over there is set up for yeah. that sort of learning, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of uh, you do one course for three years mm -hmm. and specialize in that thing as opposed to the U.S. where it's... A liberal arts model, yeah. right? So you explore before choosing what to, to settle on. Why apply both and, and not concentrate on the UK? Um, well, actually, I mainly plan to only apply to the US okay. because both my siblings went to university in the US. Ah, okay, where did they end up? Um, my sister went to Alabama okay. and my brother went to UCSD. Ah, okay, nice. So, yeah. Um, so it was just like... Are they still there? No, my sister is here and my brother is still in the US. Okay. But so it was just like... It's just what was normal in my family. 
And I guess I have like more. We have more like family friends in, in the, the US, US and the UK. Yeah, whereas okay. in the UK we really don't know anyone. Okay, so, right. yeah. that makes sense. So it was more of a a family sort of decision yeah. than anything else. Okay, got it. And I see that you've done quite a few projects mm-hmm. while you were at FAS, and of course I've gone through some of the materials that you had shared with Brandon and Petra, um, and that you you've found a lot of joy in creating algorithms. Right? Yeah. You've, you've quite enjoyed exploring them. What, can you walk us through those projects? Um, well, it's a lot of just like, I do quite enjoy data analysis. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot more. Not something that a lot of people would say. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because it's like, it's like presented in front of you. Uh-huh. And so you really just have to like pay more attention. And eventually you start noticing things. And okay. it's like, I also, and so I took AP statistics mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed that. So, yeah. And when, what was your first brush with, with data, with algorithms? Was it a class? Was it something that you had you know, spoken to maybe one of your siblings or parents about? Um, well, when I worked with the company I interned at, ah, okay. oh, so I really got to see a lot of, like, I got to see how they took, like, their, like, all their data, like, sales data, purchase data. This is what the Autopath yes, company? Yes, yes. Okay, got And it. I, like, I got to see how... Like when you look at numbers, it's just like boring. Mm-hmm. And I got to see how they can be useful. And so that was interesting. Got it. So yeah. how did you get this internship to begin with? Um, well, my parents, it's like my parents' company. Ah, okay. So, so you sort of Yeah. So you ended up working. And did you do this over sort of, you know, multiple times or this a one time thing? Yeah, it was like a summer thing. Okay. Every, well, it started out when I would just like help them out with like normal stuff and like your dad was like, like oh she's good with numbers yeah bring well no it started out where like they would need to they would need someone to like print out a lot of stuff okay and i just start with printing and then eventually you did the stereotypical uh, yeah as so i went through high school kind of stuff. i did more like in depth where i could like shadow the accountants okay and got it and, and i know there's only so much you can talk about because yeah. you've signed a, a sort of nda yeah. but what with what you can tell us what, what did you do while you were at the, um at well the it was a lot of like as i said following like the accountants mm-hmm. and i was basically an assistant of sort of so just normal internship stuff but you had yeah pretty decent hands-on experience yeah. while you were there yeah, right? I'd say. and so i think what i what i got from you before as well as now is that it wasn't the internship itself that was a big thing but but what you got out of it yeah right you you realized that you had a particular passion for data yeah. and this is something you wanted to 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 take forward. So what was the biggest takeaway over there? Did, did I sum it up or were there others? Yeah, I think definitely. And I think that's like a lot of the reason why people do internships mm-hmm. because you're not getting paid. Yeah. So, and so I think it's definitely like the learning experience and just because I've never worked a job. Yeah. So just getting to watch people and like, it was like I had worked a proper job, it felt like. So that was... But I mean, this was a proper job, right? You were there nine to five. Yeah. Multi- it wasn't one of those two hours a day, no. two days a week kind of thing where yeah. you go and then someone gives you a certificate. This was... Yeah. And you got no certificate out of this, right? I'm <laughs> guessing it's just you worked, learned a bunch yeah. of it and take... Yeah, it was definitely more for learning. Was there anything that you took away from it that you continued working on? Or anything that were you intrigued by that you then explored later on? Um. Well, I'm majoring business technology. Okay, so that was the direct... So, yeah, I kind of took... Like, I'm taking my university in that direction. And so did that cause you to switch majors as well or choose business tech in particular? Um, No. Actually, when I first applied to NYU, I applied with, I think, technology management, something mm-hmm. like that. So it was quite close. Okay. But then um, I applied to Tandon and all of my friends that were going to NYU were going to and Tandon's in Brooklyn. And all they my were friends to were in Manhattan. In Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I like, I just felt like if I went to Danden, I wouldn't be getting the whole NYU experience with my because friends. Because you wanted to be in the city. city yeah. Like, like, I, like I, as I mentioned, I'm a city person. Yeah. And so I looked for like similar courses in Manhattan. And so when I applied, so when I changed my major to Stern, I thought I wouldn't get in, but I did. And it's like, it's a really similar course. And I think it's actually better with what I want to do. Okay. Because I, well, like in my junior year, I would have loved to major in just business. But I do think that a business degree, because tech is so like future, it's like so important in the future. 
I do think it's going to open up more career options. And that's why I chose my degree. So what what exactly are you going to be looking at? Do you know already? Or is um, it yeah, different? I signed up for my classes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's like immersion classes. There's a writing course. There, um, are you happy I, about that one? <laughs> not so the, the creative writing class. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah. The writing class. Yeah. Okay. It's called like um commerce and cultures that does not sound like a creative writing class yeah no. but so it should be interesting actually okay yeah and i'm doing math um i'm doing statistics again and mm -hmm. so do you have to do a common curriculum of any yes. sort okay and so what are the what among i'm guessing the writing class yeah is one of the common that's form. the common one got it and so how many classes related to your major are you taking this semester um one none i think most of them oh most do. of them Oh, okay. Relate to my major because when you sign up for classes, they tell you all your required courses. And like, so my major is BT, right? And one of my classes is called BT Immersion. Okay. So it's really just you just click on the yeah. top of the list and it at end. Yeah. Up. That's all for today's episode of Dear Applicants. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you found the content valuable and insightful. If you'd like to learn more about our guests or the topics we discussed, be sure to check out our show notes for links and further resources.